Hello and welcome. Medea and I thought that we would jump on today. We, we haven't had a chat in a while and there's so much going on in, in our country and all around the world that we thought that we would have a, a bit of a chat. We're going to cover a number of you know, a, bit, a bit of a range of topics today, maybe psychic attacks, perhaps what's going on in Russia and the, in the Ukraine, of course. Uh, Jason Shirker's new video with, with Ray from the TLS and maybe a couple of other things as well. Fantastic. Oh, I'm so ready to talk today. I tell you, everyone should do a YouTube channel because it's so cathartic. You know, the opportunity to just talk and express what you're feeling and, you know, the things that are coming up. So good timing. <laughs> it is. It's very therapeutic, I think. It really yeah. just helps you get things off your chest and work through things and talk through things, obviously. And uh, yeah. was it Jay and Jay and April from Spiritually Raw said, everybody should have a podcast or a show and I kind of agree with them for that <laughs> you know at the very least you know re record videos and have have these zoom chats and and if you feel like posting and post them if you don't don't but at least you kind of you know at least you're expressing what you feel and you're getting your your you know things off your chest I think it's really just healthy for the mind Oh, I think just to express our authentic truth right now is crucial because we're being all tested to stand in our own personal sovereignty and to and 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 it's it's a personal test and it's a test of integrity it's a test of courage you know I even had a dream last night Dave that um I had had written this book and the book title was and it was for kids it was a children's book I could see a children's illustration on the cover and it was stand up was the book which is just about speaking up, standing up. Um, do not do not silence yourself, and do not allow um, yourself to be controlled and manipulated by forces that think they're more powerful than you are. Right. I think that uh, people might people might think, oh, what's what's one what's me talking the truth or my truth? Uh, what is that going to do? And I really think like it does a lot, you know, because it's. <sighs> it's the energy behind the words that really makes the biggest difference. It's the, you know, thoughts and words are so powerful. They're a lot more powerful than we, than we give them credence, you know, than we, than we know. And if you think about it, that's what, you know, that's why they call it spelling. You know, you're casting spells every time you're, you're creating these words and, you know, people, people put, uh, if you see like a sign, on the grass it says don't park on the grass or something you're probably not going to park there because it's it's it says that and it's all it is is just a sign but if someone yeah. says to you don't park there you're probably going to want to park there because you just want to be cheeky and piss them off or something you know but when there's a <laughs> sign there you automatically hate it it's like going to the gym and seeing the sign on the door saying there's no entry without one of these you know that's uh, right it's like, yep. well, I'm just going to flout that. I don't give a shit. You know, I'm just going to go in without it anyway. But, you know, it, it makes people stop and go, okay, I'll put it on. And then, so they are very powerful. Very much. You know, it's the intention behind everything too. So, um, you know, if you have an intention that's coming from a place of, um, um, you know, goodwill and, and, and um, caring for humanity and benevolence and, you know, all those integrity and all those qualities, you know, that, that's the key thing too. Um, so if somebody tells you not to do something, but it's out of integrity for you, you have a, a moral responsibility to do the opposite, you know, to stand in your truth. Mm. And also from a, you know, a spiritual perspective, which I think is really, it's, it's everything, it's, everything's all connected. Like everything's spiritual in a way that you can look at it. Um, yeah. But from a, you know, from a, a, a soul perspective, the more that you don't speak your truth, the more you're blocking your throat chakra, the more you're, you know, you're not expressing yourself and that's just not going to do you any good, you know, at all. Well, absolutely. I mean, the whole point of being here really is for soul evolution and soul growth and to ascend in our own energy. And we do it individually and then that helps everyone collectively. So, you know, this is the goal. You know, I had a client today and it was interesting because I was reading her energy and she basically was very 
sort of a little bit locked into the 3D matrix in terms of um, how she was functioning. And, you know, she, she would be happy for me to share this. And so it was really uh, getting a really strong message to just step out of that matrix energy and, and, and um, follow your own spiritual empowerment. So, you know, do spiritual practices regularly. Do um, get into disciplined uh, routines where you are really focusing on your own evolution. Because this mm. is absolute time right now. It's very much, it's very intense, but it's also actually a really good springboard or opportunity to, to really uh, accelerate your own uh, spiritual growth. And so um, it's like catching a wave. You know, want to catch that wave when it comes through. And, and, and sometimes the more challenging it is and intense it is, the more you can accelerate your, your growth. Yeah, no, absolutely. There's no growth of that pain, unfortunately. So we have to be constantly challenging ourselves or not shying away from the things that come into our life and come into our, our reality, right? Uh, yeah. We have to face those yeah. head on. And it, too many people, and I've been guilty of this, I'm sure we all have just kind of looked the other way or try mm. not to deal with it. And then it just keeps coming back harder and harder and harder until eventually yeah. you just, you're forced to deal with it, you know? You, yeah, you have to take on. action, whatever it is. To that's to, right. To that's right. Until it's problem. right in your face, and you just can't avoid it because boom, it's right in front of you. Like it yeah. just, like you're exactly right, Dave. How you said that, it just gets stronger and magnifies, and and your life gets more difficult. And it's like trudging through mud and molasses, and it just gets harder and harder until you focus energetically on on what is coming into your field to work on and remembering that there are no victims here so you are the soul that chose mm. to experience that lesson so you brought it in yourself and just to absolutely release I mean it's the same with everything happening in the world at the moment you could point to everything on all the darkness that's happening and say this is external to you and these are bad people and whatever but it's really also about um, transmuting our own shadow aspect and our own darkness within ourselves that is going to shift the external experience of this dark that's surrounding us and around us as well. Yeah. It reminds me, I want to tell you just a quick story about how when you ignore things, it just keeps getting worse and worse. So when I moved to Melbourne, I, I moved into this house and it was on the surface, it was going to be good. Like these two guys, they were musicians and I thought, oh, this is going to be great. But then it turns out we're on completely different wavelengths. I was just starting to kind of work towards improving my life. And these guys were still, were not doing any of that and were still stuck in the, the normal nine to five, just kind of come home and watch TV for like five, six, seven hours a, a day, like, and, uh, yeah. and more on the yeah. weekends. And there was just a big conflict there. And I should have even, even when I went to get the key, uh, this guy was my, my new housemate was watching Kings of Queen, whether well, it was on TV, King, King, the King of Queens, you know, that, that show. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know a bit. Yeah, and I said, "Oh, are you a big King of Queens fans? Like King, a King of Queens fan?" And that was my kind of like loaded question. And he said, "No, I'm just watching it because it's on." And at that point, I should have said, "Okay, this is not going to." Uh, maybe I should have just said, "Okay, thank you. I'll just go find a new house to place to live." But I didn't. That was really stupid of me. In the end, because you know, you can't be around that kind of energy, you know, if you want to improve your life, you just can't. And so long story short, I ended up living there for over a year and it really got to me. And, and, in, and I was also working at a bank, which I didn't enjoy. And I should have just looked for a new job, but I didn't for like a, a good four or five months. And then eventually the universe just slapped me with losing the house and losing my job all within like a month. And it yeah. was just very stressful. So, you know, don't, if you, if you feel like you need to move somewhere or if you need to take action, just take the action. I know it's going to be difficult, but it's going to be far easier to do it then than it is down the line. And did you get a strong inner, like a voice or a guidance? Don't do this. Don't do this. When you went into that house, like, because sometimes we get that really strong and clearly, but we don't listen to it. We're, we're trying to just switch yeah. off, you know, when that because of all the programming that's been going on in this 3D reality that's just an illusion anyway. So did you get that really strong message right when you first walked in there? I don't know. No, I don't think so. And if I did, I probably wouldn't have listened to it anyway. I wasn't really very really in tune with my intuition at that point in time. So, okay. yeah. Oh, okay. I've got to shut my window. We've got really full-on storms here, which, of course, oh, are yeah. geo 
hearing, I've got to tell you. <laughs> so I've just got to shut my window. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty full on at the minute, all the um, stuff that's going on with the, with the storms. And, you know, the, the water outside here is so dark and, and muddy. You can't even see through. It's really weird. And it's, you know, four days of full on storms. I mean, it's not normal. But anyway, so we, we, we digress. <laughs> There's so much to talk about. <laughs> mm. so while we're yeah. while we're talking about energies let's just talk about psychic attacks very briefly because uh i've been speaking to a few people and and they've all experienced similar things to what i what i experienced and uh i spoke about this with Catherine and i think bryce separately on a, on a video but i'll just fill you in as well so maybe three weeks ago three or four weeks ago i this this channel popped up on my feed in on youtube and it was a channel, really big channel, with very popular, and it was all about um, the guy was telling stories about murder mysteries and not so much, you know, kind of ghost stories, but you know, paranormal and and a lot of interesting stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me, and it really piqued my interest, and I don't didn't search for it so or anything like it, but it just popped up there, and I found myself getting very addicted to this channel. I was like watching it three or four stories a day. Uh, just over and over and over and some of them were quite scary you know as you would imagine and eventually I found myself getting into the fear state and I couldn't I went down to the park and I was in the park and it was like five or six p.m I was walking the dog and then this this tree quite far away a few hundred meters away cracked and a branch broke and that kind of made me a bit jumpy but it was around that time and then it started to get really bad and I didn't even want to like open the door at night to let the cat in because I was scared of the dark and stuff. And, and, yes, uh, yes. and then, then two nights in a row, I woke up at like 11 PM, 1130 and I couldn't sleep anymore. My mind was racing with all these different thoughts and I had to slow it down and change my thought loop and just yeah. start writing and, you know, stay awake and turn the light on. Cause I was actually too scared to go back to sleep. <laughs> like, and, and then <laughs> I took action to just block that channel, but it kept popping up and popping up. And, mm -hmm. and so I realized that it could have been a psychic attack. And I spoke to a few people and they all thought, yeah, they all said the same thing. I was like, yeah, it probably was. And they, they're getting you through the internet and they're getting you, you know, they're getting you in ways in other ways. Like they, they can get you in so many ways, but yeah. when I spoke to someone most recently, he was, he was like, well, it's, he, he had had very similar things or much worse. And his brother had also had some really bad things happen and, and he knew like 15 to 20 people that had similar, similar attacks and all kind of describing the same thing. And he goes, it's because like, it's, it's a spiritual war and you're literally at the, on the front line, you know, in this spiritual war, people that are of higher consciousness are being attacked because they're, they're, they're the most powerful at this point in time. And the dark has Especially to attack them. A public profile too, you know, when you're putting yourself out in social media too, I think that it yeah. magnifies. Probably. So yeah. the dark has to attack them. And it got me thinking about just the whole idea of like, we've been in a spiritual war ever since before we even knew for decades and decades and decades, they've been, they've been lowering our consciousness and keeping us in this certain consciousness level for decades without us even really realizing it before we even knew it was a spiritual war. Like we've been fighting this war without knowing it. Right. But now that we're aware of it, um, we have to, um well they only attack the guides i think your, your guides will only let them attack you if they think you can handle it right so if you if you well, can't handle it then <laughs> yeah 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 well i i i agree i mean i think we've been in this spiritual for a long time but it's very very intense at the minute and it's really in your face and um just like you i i actually you know, I, I probably veered off the track a little bit. And I and in one small aspect of my life, I, I, I put my toe into the 3D matrix with something and um, wasn't a good idea. I should have just stayed out of it. But energetically, I was trying to, you know, we're all just trying to navigate the unknown at the moment. Um, and so I I did that. And then um, energetically, we, we, my partner and I got a full on attack from the dark. And um, we, I was 
fairly good at transmuting it. I had a couple of times when I had a good cry, but I, I managed to transmute a lot of it. But um, I've got a lot of um, years and years of training in spiritual techniques, protecting my energy, working with energy. And so I have a really good armory, but um, it was a bit harder for my partner. And, and, and so, you know, basically it was, it was very, very, um, a, a very, very, uh, the greatest um, so, sort of psychic type attack we've ever, I've ever had or we've ever had. So um, it's pretty full on. Um, and um, so really, I think that at the moment, having tools and having resources to be able to guard against that is important. And it's not about going into fear. Because the other point of it is, you know, there's two polarities, there's fear and there's love, you're either in love or fear, and mm. we're all transmuting some aspects of fear that we've been holding within ourselves, which is our shadow self, you know, the stuff within us that we need to transmute in order to ascend. So that's part of the process. Um, and, and so it's not just externalizing and saying yet the dark's attacking us, it's also us learning to transmute that fear within ourselves. So it, it is an opportunity and a gift to do that. But I think it's really um, sensible and practical to have a lot of skills. I have some amazing prayers that I work with. One's called the Armour of God, also the Amour of God. I have um, some really powerful declarations and proclamations that, that I get clients to say to, to guard their energy. Um, there's also some audios that you can work with. There's working with very much working with Archangel Michael and his sort of truth at the moment, protecting your energy field. Um, there's so many things that you can do. There's working with a Merkaba. I have one actually that I wear, which is um, here. The Merkaba, when you work with the Merkaba, it can blind the dark and they can't find you. Um, and, you, you know, mm. you've got things that you can work with essential oils um there's a lot of things that you can do to just really uh, be mindful of protecting your energy at the moment and being very like like you were saying you were tapping into these dark energies so being really mindful of what energies you're connecting with at the moment and knowing that um they are trying to hook into the light and they're trying to do everything they can because they they're desperate they know that they're going down the dark on some level and, and so they're, they're doing everything they can to try and um, sabotage the process of the ascension on the planet and for humanity and everything and, and animals and everything. Yeah. I mean, even the, the sonic weaponry that they used in Canberra. Uh, there was a man who was talking about how it really impacted his dog. So that was, you know, affecting his dog. And I had a, a girlfriend who went to Canberra and um, uh, well, actually, two, two dear friends, and and they both got impacted by the weaponry. But she's now been in bed for ten days since she got home, and she can't move barely, you know, mm. to go to the toilet or anything. She's just so um, deeply affected by this um, sonic weaponry. So I think, you know, to be, I, I've encouraged people to stand up and 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 speak with their voice and and be activists and make a move. Um, in that way, it's a good thing, but just be really mindful of um, protecting your energy and doing everything you can that, to be aware of what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, I've been seeing a bunch of videos and photos and David Neeks had, he was really sick for quite a while, for a few days as well. D yes, I saw that. Yes. Yeah. I actually, um, yeah, I mean, I do, I do uh, energy healing for that as well. So if, People want to contact me for that. I'm doing energy healing for that, where I'm working with some angelic energies to sort of clear and try to neutralize things, um, which, you know, I've had some great effects. But of course, <laughs> you have to put a disclaimer on that, that. I don't know exactly how much it can be cleared. But, you know, I, I, I work energetically with try, uh, striving to clear that and have been given tools for that. For this moment, um, you know, there's frequency stuff coming at us, there's AI stuff coming at us, there's obviously chemtrails and poisons and all sorts of geoengineering and so forth. So, um, you know, just doing everything you can at the moment to, to have a really strong immune system, be as healthy as you can, be in as high frequency as you can. The more high frequency you are, the less able to touch you they are. I've got a beautiful space drum actually behind me, which is like raindrops, and it really raises the frequency. You know, when I play that, I mean, I've got also, I don't know if you can see, but a Tibetan bell in that pyramid as well. Walking around the oh, house, okay. playing the Tibetan bell, which clears the energy, raises the frequency. Just being really mindful of um, 
creating that um, protective space for yourself without being in fear. Um, and and, and um, yeah, because we're, we're in a full on spiritual war. Absolutely. Yeah, there's a big difference between being in fear and being prepared, you know, mm. and a lot of people mix the two up at sometimes, don't they? They, they think, oh, well, you're being fearful and you're being, uh, what's the word? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or just like you're, you're overreacting or you're, but it's not yeah. that at all. It's like, no. okay, just take food shortages for an instance, you know, for an example. Uh, you, can, you can be prepared for the food shortage. Mm-hmm. Or you can be fearful that there's one gonna that that one could be coming, but most likely if you're in a fear state, you probably won't act on it. You know, you won't take the right action because you'll be in a fear state. So yeah, you you know what I mean. You are need, but then somebody on the outside might see you preparing and go, or you're fearful that the, the food's going to run out or something. You know, but just not the case at all. It's and on the other hand, if you if you're practical and you actually get supplies in, you'll be less fearful because you know that you've always got something there to fall back on if you need it. Right. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's very interesting. But usually yeah. people mm, uh, I guess while we're talking about war, <laughs> we, we can talk about what's happening over in, in Europe and the Ukraine. Um I'd like to. what are you seeing? Obviously the you know, I saw a funny, a fu- not a funny photo, an interesting photo this morning where this newsreader was wearing a helmet and then behind him in the background, there was a guy not wearing a helmet, taking a photo and he was on some building or something and, and it's like, okay, well, they're obviously being stupid, you know, wearing this helmet when there's a guy there just taking a photo. But, you know, I am seeing a lot of videos uh, of fighter jets and things like that and, you know, people, so it's really difficult to tell what's real and what's not and, and what's really going on. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just tuning into my own um, intuitive guidance on this one. And what I get is that it's very much (laughs) obviously the opposite of what the mainstream media is saying. So they completely invert the truth. You know, they're, they're demonizing. um, Can we say the word pute? I <laughs> uh, they're demonizing him um so then you know that uh straight away you invert the truth there because that's um complete false flag what they're saying so you know he basically in my estimation and um I'm always opening to reevaluate things when I get more information but energetically what I'm picking up he's working with the alliance the the Ukraine is extremely deep state um, you can see from all the cyber attacks that have just happened recently the alliance are actually going in and, and getting and working on that aspect you know that the, the um, internet the um, cyber side of things to um, uh, sort of undo a lot of the uh, really dark stuff that's going on there in the Ukraine to do with all that dark web or whatever it's called um, and the internet stuff. And you can see that, I think, through the cyber attacks. Then you've got the um, reports coming out that there's two um, places in Ukraine that have been caught really calling on Russia to help them to become, you know, separate states and to be republics within themselves. And so he stepped in to support the peacekeeping and the um, ability for these um, states to become separate and, and to be independent. And they've got their own leaders and everything. And then there's footage also that I've seen where the the um, Russian soldiers and, and these um, people in these um states are c- coming together and dancing because they're celebrating that they're, they're being liberated. <laughs> so that's really interesting. And then you've got um, the bioweapon labs that are throughout the Ukraine that are also extremely deep state with some of the worst, um, most dangerous virus weaponry that's been in the world being developed there and they're being taken out. So to me, the Alliance is really going in and clearing up a lot of this really dark deep state stuff that's been in the Ukraine. That's what I'm feeling. And then energetically, um, and this is what I'm seeing, I'm seeing um, T-R-U-M-P, with um, pu- pute I-N, um, coming together energetically and working together and celebrating, um, you know, against, you know, all this sort of c- 
cabal, um, Biden, um, sort of deep state stuff that's going on. So that they're working together energetically, and there's a and there's a this is a chess game. There's chess moves happening. There's a higher plan in action, and it's all unfolding. And and so not buying into the obviously the fear of mainstream uh, media um, and just trusting that yeah there's a there's a bigger plan unfolding i do very much feel the alliance are working you know there's also talk about um there are dams underneath the um i've just got some information on that i'll look at that there's some dams underneath the um ukraine as well um and all tunnels underneath that leading to Scandinavia, Rome and China. So they also potentially could be working on clearing. I mean, all the dumps have been um, created by these evildoers to do all their uh, TRAF traffic lights. <laughs> I won't say the word, you know, with small people and, um, you know, all that sort of stuff and the... Um, and the substance that's used, all, all the dams have been used for that for, you know, thousands of years. And so all these are being taken out and taken down. Um, but, you know, we're in the midst of a full on intense battle at the moment. And it's hard to um, determine how much the Alliance are in charge, but um, just trusting that that, it, that is, is unfolding and, and as the more and more people stand up and you know around the world stand up for freedom and 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 stand and can see through the veil of all this illusion which is the um, globalist agenda the mm. pandemic that this rubbish you know the this that's um here to depopulate the the more that they can see through all that and the more that we can unite and stand together the more that we can overcome this um yeah, this agenda that that has been planned for such a long time. Yeah, there's definitely always a lot more than meets the eye to any to anything. And I think what's really important to remember, uh, you said so many things there, uh, but <laughs> <laughs> what's what's really important yeah. to remember is, and I, I find myself doing this too, even though I don't really watch the media, but it's really important to remember that the media is really just there to, to disinform you, misinform you. It's like, that's it's right. it's always sure. gonna it's ninety nine percent of the time it's gonna be wrong it's gonna be you know yep. it's gonna be fake or you know maybe not completely fake but it's you know what I mean it's gonna be that a lot of it is staged a lot of it is staged and I'm not saying I'm not saying that any of the Ukraine stuff is staged necessarily but um, we do have to be mindful of the fact that they may be using old footage from certain things and use passing that off as you know what's current or. Totally. Yeah, it's just like, as you know, I visualize puppets, you know, with the strings. They're just pulling the strings and making these puppets dance in the way they want them to dance to get out uh, the, the information they want to get out. So they're just mouthpieces of this, you know, in, in, in the um, information by Jason Shuka that's just been released um, to do with the light system. It talks about the evildoers, however you want to, you know, the Kazarian mafia, Jews, um, you know, the, the beings at the highest level that are hidden from us that are pulling all the strings. And the fascinating thing I think about that as well, because I watched the part two last night, was that um, he talks about this ray being who's working for the light system. And he, he talks about the fact that the um, ETs that are around on every level are, are benevolent. They're here to help us. And so any sort of... Um, narrative that they're here on the earth and they're and they're um you know working against humanity is incorrect he said that the the, the beings that are the evildoers they're working against humanity are part human you know they're, they're they're i think he talks about them being um rep, reptilian and they're shapeshifters so they can shapeshift into reptilian forms but they're they're part human they're not et so they I think that this dis disinformation about ETs is to scare everyone into incredible fear so that we, are again, uh, disenfranchised and, and, and um, unable to unite with those energies um, because of this, um, you know, mind control. And um, 
the other thing is um, that with the, um, you know, it's really interesting because, you know, you see, I don't know if you've seen footage of this day, but, you know, when the reporters and they're showing them and sometimes their eyes go into like a lizard's eyes and they shift, you know, they're, they're much more, um, finding it much more difficult to hold their form now because of the energies. And so they're becoming more evident, more obvious that these energies are not human energies. So they, they can't hold their form in the same way. And, we're, and it's being revealed more and more that we're actually seeing them change their form in some ways. You know, there's footage of this a lot now on the internet. Um, and, and so that's really interesting. You know, they, they, they are they're unable to be as hidden as they were before and, and it's revealing itself more and more. Yeah, there's been a lot of videos about that uh, kind of thing with many celebrities, uh, many uh news readers i've seen some very interesting ones some of them you probably think oh, okay they could be fake but i have have seen some very interesting ones where the whole neck was was going crazy like it's really strange exactly. and and, like the, a and, it, and all of a sudden the teeth become really sharp and yeah and, uh, and they get those splits in the eyes you know like a yeah like a, a lizard or something yeah i did see yeah. one where where two two actually it might have been the same guy actually where he was his american news reader and he was out doing a story somewhere and one time he's he's this massive tongue just came out i think there was a fly or, <laughs> a fly or something <laughs> flying around but he this massive tongue and he kind of he he had to walk off camera because he, he knew what was happening and he he had to walk off camera he was shape-shifting and yes it's really interesting i was really interested in that stuff uh yeah, yeah. i find it and very fascinating they can't hide it to the same degree anymore. Their, their, their true aspect is becoming more, more revealed because of the frequency of the planets shifting upward right. and they can't sustain or hold their frequency within that higher energy anymore. So, yeah, Makes you were sense. seeing more and more Makes of that. Sense. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for it to happen on the, like, the nightly news or something, though, that, you know, and it ha has happened before. Like, it, these, yeah, yeah. It's, it's happened okay. before, but I'm, I'm waiting for it to happen in Australia. Uh, you know, they always, there's a woman here in, in, it's a little bit off topic, but there's a woman, the woman, one of the news readers here in Perth who reads for the ABC news. And I was looking at her recently and they've kind of changed. I don't watch the news very often really at all, but usually they sit down, but more recently they've been standing up and, and you get to see pretty much her whole body. Well, from the waist up anyway, and she's this really tall, thin woman and her hands are enormous and, mm. And I'm just like, hey, she could be, she could be a man. Like, you know, she could be a man. I mean, some women have big hands, sure. Then, but but of course, we know all about the Freemason Illuminati stuff where they have this ritual thing where they change the sex at birth. Right. And then yeah. so many politicians. You look at a lot of the politicians um, and a lot of the people in power, and the females look like males. Mm. And, and, and the males sometimes look like females. It's just really weird. And, and you can see energetically there's definitely a that. Few, there's definitely a few in Australian politics, uh, in, oh, the health, in the health sector. That are, <laughs> oh, absolutely. That are, absolutely. And they, they just have the energy of the other sex and you can pick it up in their energy field. They don't. And, and, and um, yeah, they've got those, those other qualities as well. So, yeah, I see that a lot. And, and that's just that strange part of their, you know, satanic practices and rituals and things that they do. Um, and, and, you know, the celebrities do that with their young kids and all that, mm. where they dress them in the opposite, you know, um, clothes and try to encourage or they did the whole transhuman um, agenda that that's um, trying to uh, disempower the family unit and break down, you know, that, that sort of core of society that is, is what, um, is what it's all about you know yeah yeah it's really it's really a lot of people now uh kind of coming around to the idea that there's evil controlling the world obviously with with certain things especially with the with the thing in the arm and and things like mm -hmm. that uh, a lot of people mm -hmm. a lot of people unfortunately think that now that you know because they're, they're talking about aids and stuff you know in the in them absolutely uh, by the third one of these, you if you have a check. Yeah, a lot of people think that it's a it's an accident. Like I, I don't understand the meant that how how it could be an accident. You know, if like if you're if you're making a pizza, mm. 
and the ingredients are poisonous, then they've been put there on purpose or for a reason, you know? <laughs> like, oh, my gosh. I mean, th- these you know, are just, very you know, just make a pizza things. and and one out of 10 yeah. pizzas is poisonous, you know? It's, it's, it doesn't work like that. Exactly. Oh, my gosh. It's like, you know, that, that they have um, a whole advanced agenda and we don't know the level of advancement that they're incorporating in all their in all their what you, their science or you know whatever their their research that they've been doing because they've been doing this for years and years since you know the the Nazi you know went to America after the Second World War and did all this um, undercover stuff um, in the name of um, the science what was it the space programs or whatever so you know these these sorts of things that they're doing we don't know the level of nefariousness nefariousness that's people involved in it. But it's so extensive and advanced that it's it's quite a few levels ahead of where, where we can quite um, understand and we're finding out more and more information all the time. And it's no accident that all these HIV researchers have just recently been bumped off, including Luke. Right. I'm not yeah. saying he was definitely bumped off Luke Montagne, but it's certainly an extremely interesting coincidence that just when he's revealed a whole lot of stuff about mm. um AIDS and he's a and he's a noble um you know noble prize researcher yeah. that he dies all of a sudden and um all these you can see there's all these um AIDS researchers around the world that have just recently been um, bumped off as well so that's very timely considering that now all the um, hospitals and things are saying that you have to have a HIV test when you go in right. if you yeah. present with cold symptoms or anything like that Crazy. now this is all completely being pre-planned. I, I wrote about this two years ago on my Facebook page, all this stuff that's happening now and put it out there and people, you know, I got a huge, it went viral, got a huge response, but lots of people saying, oh, you're imagining things, da da it's all, everything that I said coming mm. out now. And it's like, you know, these um, these um, things, for example, the um, all these uh, uh, things, the jabs, can we say that word? <laughs> Doesn't matter. You said it now. But just don't say it again. Just <laughs> that's, true. that's true. All these things, you know, if they made one every one second for the billions that have been created, they would have had to start at least thirty-two years ago. If one was uh, created every one second, that's how pre-planned it is. Do you know what mm. I'm saying? Well, either yeah. they either they started a long time ago, or they literally haven't got enough to. to to service the entire world because if you think about it like our our country and i would imagine other countries are similar we've ordered something like seven jet seven things for every every one person well, they have. yeah they have got those but that's over that's they over have. a number of years but they but they're getting yeah. them in all the time and supposedly and i don't believe this at all because you know our state was supposed to open up at the end at it's pretty much the start of this month and now and they mm-hmm. postponed it another month so it's supposed to open march 3rd now but the reason why they didn't and the 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 uptake for the uh, for the third one hadn't wasn't wasn't high enough. Now we're apparently we're at sixty percent now, within in less than a month. I just don't I don't buy it. It's, oh it's God, insane. I don't buy it either. I know the the mainstream media would have us say that you know in Victoria something like ninety percent have all got this. You know, blah blah blah. You know, when, you actually, when you muscle test it, you know it's probably more like thirty or forty percent. Um, yeah, and 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 you know they want to do this every three months. They want to bring it one every three months. I mean, it's so obvious what their little strategies are. Yeah. Very predictable. That's the thing with the dark. They're not creative. They're predictable because they can't think creatively. They have the same strategy. It's the same thing that was rolled out in 1918 with the Spanish flu and the jabs yeah, for that. Exactly. You exactly. know that was exactly. the same thing. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't the Spanish flu. It was the jabs. Same thing. Same depopulation mm. strategy just being rolled out again. Um, same, 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 you know, it's boring. And, you know, obviously, um, you know, it's incredibly sad for, for, for the people that have been so um, mind controlled and programmed by the whole narrative that they can't see beyond that. And it's a consciousness thing too. And, you know, with all the, all the chemicals that we're being um mm ingesting and 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 the poisons and everything you know that chemically on a chemical level change your you know biochemical um, makeup so that you don't have the clarity in your pineal pineal gland with the fluoride and it's getting all blocked and everything like that so you know complete compassion for everybody that 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 believes this agenda because 
you know, we've had a lot against us, but um, it's sort of now a time that you, we can't afford to to not wake up or, or to not have that consciousness because you, on some level, you're going to energetically be left behind, you know, um, I feel. In I, wanted to, I wanted to ask you about the, the Spanish the Spanish flu uh, because, because they had pretty much the exact same thing happened then, although they, uh, although I think that the way that that started was with a, with a thing in, in a, in a yeah. military base. So yeah. there was actually something. So they started it with a thing and they ended it with a thing, but mm. re- whereas this time they just started it with the media and, mm-hmm. and, and maybe there was a, a real, a real sickness, but it wasn't anywhere near as bad as they said it was, but I wanted to, cause what's happening back then, what happened back then with the, they had to wear muzzles too and everything. And, and I, mm. And I'm wondering, like, what was the the tipping point or the the reason why they stopped doing all of that? You know, because it wasn't. I think it was because at this point in time, we're getting really close to the end of the plan. Whereas back then, maybe they were just testing the waters and seeing what they could do. You know, and they they there wasn't the end. It wasn't the end, anywhere, anywhere near the end of their their agenda. It was, I guess, maybe the beginning. You know, in 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 some ways. Well, maybe, you know, they had less population back then. Maybe they had a goal of how many people that they wanted to have and then and then that was controllable to be able to be controlled and manipulated by them to, to achieve their goals. You know, there's much more population on the planet now, so they're, they're wanting to, you know, really cut it back um, mm-hmm. way more than they, that they did then. Um, I, I think it's been a, a thing that has happened over and over in history where they've had, they had a goal of, you know, what they wanted to create and then they've aimed for that just so that the, 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 the people on the planet were manageable, you know, that they could control and manipulate them to the degree that they wanted. And um, so maybe they considered that had been achieved at that time and so they didn't have to go further. Um, right. they, you know, there's always a higher higher sort of nefarious reason for their for their agendas of why they do things um and and now you know it's it's an all-out you know attempt to um take take you know the human population to ground zero again and 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 you know that they're not going to be successful because there's too many people that are awake consciousness has shifted I mean, even things like a few days ago, we got this huge, they say it was the biggest ever solar flare that's happened. So when those solar flares happen, they actually come down and they shift the um, energetic frequency of the earth to a higher octave. And so it um, raises, again, consciousness wakes people up and and the dark can't sustain in those energies either as as it shifts up more and more. So, you know, we're getting a lot of um, higher help I think the galactics might have, you know, contributed to that, you know, in that way. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting. We, we, we have, I think also the galactics recognise that we have a moment now that is absolutely crucial to, to get this right because it affects a whole entire cosmic, you know, universes, all universes, all cosmic systems. What is happening on Earth now is going to impact all that. And, um, you know, there's also another interesting theory too, Dave, that we... What happened was um, many, many, you know, thousands of years ago, we we saw the direction that Earth was going in and that humanity was going in, and and there was a, a certain amount of uh, beings that decided to come in um, with with great um, grace and love and benevolence to um, amalgamate themselves back in the in the on the Earth plane and to. Um, absorb all this darkness and and try to help transmute it so that nobody or not many people would be left behind in this process for ascension so there was they were assisting um this process of of humanity progressing and evolving because it was at such a place that it, it it didn't look good um and because of the benevolent grace that those beings gave to humanity you know we're getting extra galactic help now as well because they know that we came out of um you know the goodness of our hearts and and through love to transmute the dark and 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 they can see that and they also um honoring um all 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 humanity and being able to go forward because of that as well so really interesting i think yeah, it is very interesting. Uh, there's so many. So, so I heard a similar story about 
about that. And just to go back to the, the Spanish flu, it was because, because everybody would have been very asleep back then. Everybody would have been very unconscious. We didn't have the internet, so we couldn't, we couldn't see an alternative point of view. All, we, all they had was the, what the media was saying. So you can imagine what kind yes. of, you know, you can imagine yes. what kind of uh, propaganda was being, that was during the wartime too. So there was a lot going on, uh, mm. which is interesting. Yeah. We're having a war now as well. There always seems to be multiple ways, you know, that they, to further their agenda or multiple, you know, mm -hmm. I guess there's no there's no one step is there it's many 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 thousands of steps to get to get to where they want to go that's right uh, that's right it's a constantly evolving chess game where one makes one move and then the other side makes another move and then they make a move and then, so it's hard to um prophesize you know exactly which direction it, it, it's heading or going in in different ways because it is very much dependent on how that goes and also the collective consciousness so the collective mm. consciousness determines those steps as well yeah i just i just imagine this 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 thought pops into my head quite often uh, just how different the world would have been uh, and where we could take this world now you know from now onwards uh yeah. if if those those beings didn't exist and if we were all programmed with with abundance love peace and joy then it would just be a different world altogether wouldn't it i would just it would just be totally Totally. Well, I, th I think it's about really standing up now, everyone's standing up in whatever way they can to um, take down this old archaic um, paradigm that no longer um, that no longer reflects who humanity are anyway. And we, we just don't want this darkness on the planet anymore. And then creating new systems, new communities, new ways of being mm. in the world. Um, so it's, it's, it's one part of it is um, dissolving the old, all the old structures, everything, the medical, the, the yeah. education, the financial, the political, Definitely. everything, yeah. just dissolving all that and then creating new systems at the same time. So you've got something positive to focus on as well, something hopeful that you're, that you're creating. It's not, not just about focusing on the destruction of the old, it's about creating the new and, mm. and, and, you know, I think, I think that's really important as well. Yeah. For sure. Speaking of which, there's there have been a lot of I don't know about I mean, are you seeing a lot of I mean, there's a lot of a lot of uh, countries are now dropping mandates and things, and and I even saw Tasmania is doing that soon too, if they haven't already done it. Uh, cool. And Victoria, I think, also, and I don't know what's what's happening over in in New South Wales. Um. Well, it's. As far as I know at the moment, it's it's nothing shifting particularly um, that I'm aware of, but I am noticing these strange weather patterns that are happening, and I'm wondering if you know because we're not that far from Canberra and things like that. It could be to do with all that um, strange um, weather phenomenon going on, and in a lot of flooding here as well. Mm. Um, so. That's just not normal um, natural uh, weather activity. It's definitely um, some agenda behind that. Um, so it's hard to pinpoint exactly what that is. But um, yeah, yeah, I, th I think I think that New South Wales is basically um, the same at the minute. Um, yeah, I think it's really interesting that the um, in Canada the uh, Emergencies Act got revoked. That was yeah. interesting. That is interesting. Um, so interesting to see that. But then on the other hand, the um, protester Tamara that got, um, that was. Um, oh, she got arrested. Yes. And she wasn't allowed to have bail. She was one of the, they said, the con, the creators of the convoy um, protest movement. They said that um, she could be in jail for 10 years, which is just right. terrific. So hopefully mm. that's not going to. Um, should be able to get out soon. Who knows? Yeah, and I love what Rana Fumik's doing as well. You know, with his yeah. grand jury, so yeah. that's really cool. Seeing all that unfolding, and they're not going through the usual judicial systems because our judicial systems are so corrupt. So many of them are bought off by the um, the deep state, or in fear to to stand up um, in in terms of their family and what what would happen to their careers and everything in there. And their and their incomes. So, yeah, very interesting. 
it is very interesting uh, how we've been able to be, like you just said, they're worried about what could happen to, well, to their family, but also their, their income. And the income is the biggest, is one of the biggest controlling methods uh, yeah. that they've used, obviously, to get people to take the thing and in, in other ways too, obviously, with the corruption and everything. And, and yeah. unfortunately, and I was thinking about this yesterday, like all the people, no, this morning, actually, like all the people that are part of the cabal or, or uh, in high places who are somehow connected or not or just following orders, they all chose money over, you know, they all chose money over the, uh, over the conscience. They all chose. And fear, and fear, being in fear that, 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 that they would be, something would happen to them as well. So instead of going into love, they went into fear. It, um, it's all a personal test at the moment. It's a personal spiritual test for every single person to be as much in their moral integrity um, and to be in their authentic truth as much as they possibly can at this time, regardless of um, what the external um, situation, I mean, you obviously got to be aware of your safety and things like that but um, as much as possible of what we can stand in our truth in the midst of um, these external um, power control structures that are around us um, really very much a personal test for every single person and and I know um, I, I've passed the test but it hasn't been easy and I've been <laughs> been whacked with it but that's that's okay all for john and, and and we just have to think of ourselves as warriors this time warriors and you know yeah no it's really it's really not it's really unconscionable what they did you know attaching attaching your livelihood to or anybody's livelihood to the, the fact whether they want to take this thing or not like it's it's insane i really i really do hope that um, people can get compensated in some way for that uh, whether through it, whether it's through. Oh, your sound's gone. Whether it's That's through, it. whether it's oh, through yeah. uh, uh, like a Nasara Jasara type thing or whatever, because in many ways, no amount of money can really, you know, can really compensate for what's happened. Uh, but, but at the same time, mm. you know, some money would be good. You know what I mean? Because we've all had, we've all had to Absolutely. experience this thing on different yeah. levels over the last two that's years right. and that's right. you know, we've all the been damaged in some toll. way you know yeah yeah that's right the emotional toll the mental toll the spiritual toll the physical toll you know um on our on us but um you know we we chose to be here for this and and uh, and we were chosen because they that the higher beings considered that we would be up for the task that we'd be able to do this so uh just knowing that our souls are considered strong enough to be able to stand at this time and really do what we need to do. Um, and the physical world, remembering too, that there is, it is an illusion. You know, there's higher metaphysical stuff going on here. And mm. the, the, the physical reality that we see is purely an illusion. It's, it's the densest reality and it's the, in truth, the most unreal reality. So connecting to your spiritual core, and of course the, the AI, the technology, the more you're, you're in technology and AI, in some ways, the less spiritual you are. So it's disconnecting us from our spirituality. And that was the intention as well. So, and then of course, this is, 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 has been designed, many of them to disconnect our divine connection and our soul connection from who we are. So that's again, disconnecting our spirituality. So. Um, if they're trying to disconnect our spirituality in these different ways, then clearly we need to <laughs> develop our spirituality and stand more in our spirituality in order to progress as souls and ascend and, and to um, really overcome these um, insidious forces that we're seeing more and more in the world around us now. Do you think that there will come a time, hopefully soon, where uh, the, just the, the evil will just be, well, not all gone but a really really high percentage of it will be gone there'll be no more we won't be seeing a lot of the stuff that we're seeing now and you know and we won't be being attacked by things we can't see and, and you know things like that uh yeah. yeah i definitely think it will happen i don't know exactly how long you know in the in the tls information he talks about 170 years i think oh god please make it quicker than that but who knows you know maybe not my lifetime but i hope so um maybe our children's generation will see but 
you know, in some ways you can't attach to a time with this because when you consider it in the context of our evolution um, over, you know, <laughs> humanity over time, it's yeah. the blink of an eye anyway. So um, our, human, our human form wants to know times because it makes it easier. But in truth, we can't really know what that is. You know, I hope it's in our lifetime, but there's a lot of darkness that we have to um, transmute here. Um, so hard to say and again is it's also an expression of the collective consciousness so the quicker we wake up the quicker we can shift um and and we can call upon our um galactic uh help we can call upon our higher guidance our spiritual team to come in and work with this in 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 the most um magnified accelerated ways that we can we can call upon that so the more people that call upon that and ask for that help the better as well um you know we we would benefit from it happening quicker in some ways wouldn't we really yeah and i think that's part of the reason why some people uh opted to get the thing and then may have a bad reaction or may unfortunately pass away is because like it's going to be like they wanted to cull the population but yeah I think in many ways it's going to be like a natural selection, a natural culling of the population sure, to, to remove people or that weren't ready to go to the next level, thereby increasing the consciousness of the people that are on the planet, you know what exactly. I mean, to help us get there a little bit quicker. That's true. And, you know, that transhuman um, AI um, genetic evolution that may happen on other, another planet or in a different direction where that AI is taken by the people that have had this um, in another direction um, according to, I guess, what is um, um, in, in alignment on some level for that to extend in that way. And then the people that want the organic human, they'll go in another direction. And, and like you say, the consciousness will be greatly um, amplified because you won't have these lower energies holding us down energetically or just oblivious of, um, of, mm. of what's happening. And, and yeah, absolutely a natural selection thing. And, and it sounds hard to say that, um, especially when we all have, you know, family members and friends that have, are choosing to go on a different pathway. Yeah. But again, it's that um, non-attachment of spiritual mastery and, and being able to surrender and let go attachment to all things and focus on your own frequency and your own soul evolution in this process. I'd, I'd love to even um, finish with a prayer that I wrote, if we could, Dave. Yeah, yeah, sure. Do you want oh, to... Do you want yeah. uh, sharing, screen sharing? Yeah. Yeah, that would be lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Had you finished what you were going to say? Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Cool. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So th this is um, something that I wrote, um, just was guided to write the other day. So I'll just say, and you, you can, people can contact me to receive this. You know, if people want to also have a session with me, please feel welcome to contact me. Um, this is a powerful command prayer to repeat three times. Can you see that there, Dave? Yep. Oh, great. We call in the divine creator energy. We command our higher self's presence to be here now. And we center ourselves in our creator heart. We command our highest spiritual team and highest guides and teachers of purified love and light. We call in all our galactic family who are committed to the highest good of all humanity. We command all the saints and all the angelic realms to work with us now. And, and I will make the point that don't forget, you can call in the saints. They want to work with us. But again, you've got to invite them in before they can come in. They want to work with humanity right now. We call in the elemental kingdoms and the animal kingdoms to assist us. We ask to magnify this prayer one million fold to touch each soul on earth and beyond. Mother Earth is a profound treasure to be honoured, protected and loved from this moment on by all souls. Humanity is a gift from and of the divine and is to be honoured, protected and loved from this moment on by all souls. Every child on Earth has the inherent birthright to live a safe, healthy and happy life. And we ask for etheric shields of protection to be placed around all souls who request this at a higher level. All precious life on earth, animal, plant, elemental is a precious aspect of the divine, which is to be honored, protected and loved from this moment on by all souls. All precious life beyond this planet that honors the divinity of all is also to be honored and protected at the highest levels. 
We ask in the name of the I am presence, I am, that anything that does not follow the criteria above be placed in individual seals of white light, bound to the light and transposed into positive energy. We ask to raise the frequency of humanity and earth in divine alignment, whereby only the frequencies and energies that contribute to the collective good of all will be able to be sustained in the ongoing energies as we invite higher levels of divine love, light and truth to this realm. We command that a natural dissolution of anything that does not support the highest collective good be dissolved into light in alignment with divine will. This we command now. We command that this resonates around the universe as our free will command. We command that this request be recorded in our and humanity's sacred Akashic records proxy for all humanity. It is done. It is done. It is done. And so be it. And just trusting our higher guidance and source that this is done. That's awesome. Thank you. So thank you so much, David. What a wonderful chat. <laughs> it was such great timing. I so wanted to talk today. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. Me too. I, I have been taking a step back from videos as well a little bit. So I've kind of, as I mentioned to you before coming on, I've been taking a step back from everything really and kind of yes. recentering myself and, you know, getting to, I guess, rethinking. Cause you know, sometimes you can get, you can get, you can get into the motions of just going through the motions of doing whatever it is that you're doing without really giving too much thought to it, you know? And, and I think it's important to reflect every now and then and, and, you know, Absolutely. think of the purpose just behind. Yeah. The purpose and to process behind. everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, our nervous systems are so overstimulated at the moment with everything that's going on. You need to give yourself physically as well as mentally, emotionally, that time to just um, integrate and 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 um, be still and be quiet and 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 connect with the inner. I think that's so healthy that you've that you've done that. And I think it's a great thing. And you know, all this uh, information on some level, um, the conspiracy information, the, the, the energy of everything that we're going through on this 3D reality is a slipstream. And so you can get very caught up in it. It's very addictive. And mm. in a way, want to sometimes rise above that and get out of that slipstream and just go into that higher spiritual space where you can get a break from it all. Yeah, it is very addictive. And and if you don't, either, you know, the MSM or even the alternative media can be, you know, can put you into a fear state just as much as the other one. So um, mm. I also think that, you know, it's been two years now. Everybody's really tired. You know, we're all just tired. We all just oh, kind of. Oh, it's like a huge marathon. Oh, yeah. We all just kind of. Everyone's saying that. Yeah. Whether you're awesome. aware or not, whether you're aware yeah. or not, everybody wants it to end. You know, we just want to, everyone just wants to go back to normal, you know. Uh, that's right that's and, right and the, the tiredness that people are feeling and you know how they're sleeping now during the day people and they're having to rest during the day as well as at night because our bodies and everything you know so just full-on self-kindness at the moment full-on nurturing whatever you can do to to support yourself through this process you know um so it is a marathon yeah i've had a few a few weeks in fact where i felt like having a nap i didn't have any naps but i felt I probably should have actually i probably should have had a a nap during oh, the day <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll admit it <laughs> yeah. but I, I am older than you but you know whatever <laughs> just <laughs> go with my body my body goes Medina do this oh, okay <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah sometimes you push through and then you just kind of don't need a nap but yeah, yeah. anyway <laughs> I think that'd be a good place to leave it <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, there's great protocols too that you can work with at the moment. If people want to hear about that, you know, just let me know. I, I'm happy to offer people a 10% discount on my sessions at the moment. Um, they just um, need to use the code, um, which is Unite the World, or capital letters, Unite the World 10, and they can get a 10% discount. I'll, I'll leave you um, some of the uh, links below as well um, and with Dave if anyone wants to book a session because right now clearing our energy field is really important connecting um, with making sure that we are um, healing ancestral uh, DNA um, genetic stuff that, that's there we want to have a clear slate we want to do forgiveness on behalf of our ancestors you know there's so much that we need to do right now to clear energetically all aspects of our own soul and our own soul's um, genetic lineage too so, you know, that's really important as well as, you know, 
uh, past life clearings and whatever else that come up in a session. Um, it, it, you want to be clearing your energy at the moment, big time, you know, mm. just emptying it all out, big, big um, spring cleaning. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for your time, Medina. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you so much, Dave. So wonderful to chat with you. Do. Have a good day. I'll speak to you soon. Lovely.